Welcome to another episode of Med Break. Thank you for joining me on your break. Today I'll be discussing a very juicy topic where I compare the MD degree and the DO degree. I'm going to assume that you already know some things about these two degrees because you clicked on this link. There are many other YouTube videos that explain what exactly the MDs and DOs are. This video will be about me expressing my opinion and presenting you way more details than any of those videos went into. I'm going to say MD and DO, not allopathic and osteopathy, because that takes way too long. Let me be very clear that a doctor's ability to care for a patient is not defined by his or her degree. They're good doctors that are both MDs and DOs. Both MDs and DOs can be excellent doctors, clinicians, educators, researchers, and surgeons. You already know that both MDs and DOs are fully licensed to practice medicine in the US to its full degree, including prescribing, treating, and doing surgeries. I met a DO doctor for the first time when I was shadowing during undergrad. He was an anesthesiologist, and that's when I realized that DOs do exactly the same thing as MDs. It was kind of a mind-blowing moment where there's another degree that does the same thing. Also during medical school, my favorite instructor was a DO. And during my internship, a lot of my co-residents were DO and every single one of them, excellent people. Your patients are not gonna care whether you have an MD and DO. All they care about is that you help them and that you empathize with them. You might have to explain to your uncle what a DO is, you know, educate him. He's not gonna be like, DO's not a medical degree. It's missing a letter and it has an extra letter. No one's gonna say that. He'll be like, oh, okay. Can you take a look at a mole on my butt? Or ask you other weird questions like, my legs cramp every time I poop. Can you look into that? They honestly are not gonna care. Historically, there are differences, like MD was more research oriented, generally, and DO treated the whole patient and focused on preventative care. But these days, the concept of evidence-based medicine and treating the whole patient and prevention, they will be mentioned in your first week of medical school, both MD and DO, if not the first day of medical school. A big difference even to this day is that DOs learn OMT, osteopathic manipulative technique, that MDs don't. I never got to learn it because I did not go to a DO school. Done. The video can end here. To answer the question on the thumbnail, which is better, DO or MD, both are the same. They're equally awesome. They both do a lot for the patient. And that's the end of it. That's the answer. But that's not why you're here. You're here for the nitty gritty details on the difference between the two. Maybe you're deciding between the two or you're just curious. There's some YouTubers out there who got a lot of negative reaction because I think the way they presented the information. Every time I'm gonna talk about the differences, I'll present you with evidence and support my claim. And this video is all about that so that you are more informed going forward. The question that you're actually asking is, is an MD degree more prestigious than a DO degree? I think the most accurate way of saying it is in the field of medicine, there is a perceived sense of superiority of MDs over DOs. These were the words written by the president of VCOM, a DO school. And I'm gonna go over the four main reasons why. First reason. The main reason is that the MD degree is generally more well known. It has been around much longer. The first medical school was founded in the US in 1765 in Philadelphia, now known as UPenn Perlman School of Medicine. The first DO school was found by Dr. A.T. Stills, the American School of Osteopathy, now known as A.T. Still University, Kirksville in Missouri. Dr. Still was an MD when he found the school. He technically didn't graduate from DO school, but I guess he gave himself one because he found the whole thing. And you know, that's okay, I think. Also, there are way more MDs than DOs. There are about 800,000 doctors practicing in the US and about 50,000 are DOs. That's less than 10% of the total doctor working population. Also, MDs are portrayed generally in a good light in the TV shows and in the popular culture. You know, House, MD, Grey's Anatomy, Scrubs, Chicago at Med, ER, The Good Doctor, The Resident, they're all about MDs. Nancy Grace has a pathologist that is a DO, but that pathologist has a complex about having the DO degree compared to the MD colleagues. They should really make a show about just DOs. Are you listening, Netflix? They're prominent figures in the news that are MD doctors like Dr. Fauci leading the COVID-19 uh, management. There's Dr. Oz, uh, US Surgeon Generals. There's presidential candidates who has been MDs. Here's a trivia for you. There was no president who was a doctor. However, there was a president who did go to medical school. William Henry Harrison attended UPenn, 
but then he withdrew. Probably to pursue some other greater things, I don't know. MD medical schools are usually associated with a larger educational institution like IV schools, big state schools, the University of California system. I think this is a minor point, but the MD degree is recognized more internationally, basically recognized everywhere in the world, but the DO degree in the US is recognized in only about 50 countries. The AOA, the governing organization for DOs, is working really hard to get that number up. So it goes without saying that MDs have been getting way more exposure to the general public than DOs. The second reason is that statistically speaking, it is easier to get into a DO school than an MD school. That's just what the number says and let me show you. There are around 21,000 applicants to DO schools every year and the acceptance rate is about 35%. On the other hand, there are around 53,000 applicants to MD schools and the acceptance rate is about 40%. If you just look at those numbers, you might think like, oh, actually getting into a DO school is harder, but you really have to look at the strength of the applicants. And the easiest ways to do that is to look at the score, the MCAT score and GPA. So in 2016, the median score for people who matriculated into a DO school was 502 for the MCAT. And then in 2017, it was 503. And then 2018, it was 504. And you can see in parentheses, the median score of the people who applied to DO schools. I did a similar thing with GPA here. Now let's take a look at the MD side. There wasn't a data for 2016 that I could find, but in 2017, the median score of the acceptance to an MD school was 510, and then it kept increasing. In 2018, it was 511, and 2019, although we don't have the numbers for the DO school, the number still increased 511.5 and I'm guessing it's still gonna increase on and on for both schools, DO and MD. And you can see the median for the people who apply to MD schools. And you see the uh, GPA in a similar manner. There is a consistent seven point gap in the MCAT score, which is huge. It's hard to increase that much uh, when you're studying for these tests. I know that Dr. Mike said the gap is narrowing, but it actually is not. It's just maintaining the same. I would even argue that getting your score to improve from the higher ranges to an even higher number is more difficult. Knowing this fact, there is way more students who say that they're gonna go for an MD school and then they're gonna try DO if they don't get into an MD school than students who say, I'm gonna try to go for DO school and if I don't get in, then I'll try for an MD school. Please don't hate me. This is just what the numbers are. I just wanted you to know. Speaking of test scores, let's look at the medical students themselves. Looking at the board scores, the you know step one, step two, and step three, the pass rates were all similar. They report the pass rates, but they don't really report the median uh, score. Step one and step two CK are scored. So I don't know how those compare between the MDs and DO degrees. The third reason is that MD candidates to residency positions have a higher chance of going into the specialty they want and to more popular programs compared to DO applicants. So we don't know if this is from just program directors favoring the MD degree or that MD applicants are stronger. There isn't any data to kind of look into this. There are, however, program directors of residency programs who have openly stated that they don't take any DOs because of how it'll make their program look. Then they said, it's not really that they think DOs are worse and that MDs are better. It's just because there is a perception that having DOs in your program will make it look weaker. And I wish that this sentiment will change and I think it'll change in the future. DOs can go wherever they want. They can match into any subspecialty, but they definitely do have a disadvantage because of this perceived sense of superiority of MDs over DOs. The fourth and the final reason is that medicine is a field that is driven by research and evidence and discovery of new knowledge for the patients. And in the research realm, MDs are killing it, both MDs and PhDs. Historically, MD schools have encouraged research and conducting research to students a lot more than DO schools have. Looking at a recent example of COVID-19, you know, evaluating how the disease works and running clinical trials and looking into potential treatments, MDs and PhDs are leading the charge by far. One very important aspect of conducting research is the ability to secure grants. When you say you wanna do research, someone just doesn't hand you the money. He's like, oh, go ahead, here's some money, do research. No, you apply for these research grants. And one of the biggest 
organization that funds research is the National Institute of Health, NIH. The ability to secure grants from various organizations, mainly the NIH, can make or break your research career. There's many different tiers of grants, and it's like a sports contract. Some get a really good contract, some get not so good contract. The mother of all grants is called R01. R01 is the most prestigious research grant and it gives you the most money so you can pursue a research question more in depth. And it is excellent thing to have on your resume moving forward in your research career. So there are several papers that came out from DO doctors that analyzed who are getting these R01 grants. So I'll go over these papers. Dr. Martina Antony, a DO doctor in 2017, looked at uh, 264 R01 grants given to emergency medicine doctors in a span of 10 years, 2006 to, 2000, uh, 2006 to 2016, so in the past 10 years, and 78% were given to MD doctors, the rest were given to PhDs, and zero were given to uh, DOs. Dr. Eric Berg in 2020 looked into R01 grants given to OB-GYN and general surgery, and in the past 10 years, similar numbers, out of the 263 grants given to OB-GYN doctors, 44% were given to MDs, rest to PhDs, zero to DO doctors. Looking at the general surgery side, 600 R01 grants, 58 given to MD doctors, rest to PhDs, no DO doctors. Then Dr. Joshua Cuoco, a DO in 2020, looked at 480 R01 grants given to the field of neurosurgery. Again, 44% given to MD doctors, rest to PhDs, none to DOs. If R01 uh, is like a major league contract, then MDs and PhDs are playing in the major leagues. Interestingly, there's an article written by uh, the president of VCOM, a DO school, along with other professors at VCOM, that looked into this matter. And I'll be reading a little bit here. So NIH, when they're looking into this in 2008, had 83,000 active grants funding different research projects here and there. Only 0.1% was held by a osteopathic organization. They also looked at who is submitting applications to get these NIH research grants. Osteopathic schools submitted only 0.4% of these applications. One of the reasons why they thought that this might be happening is because there are people who review the grants and then decides whether to give you the money or not. And people who sit on this uh, review board is very important. And this is called the NIH study section. So out of the 3,233 members in the study section, there were a few hundred MDs, a lot more PhDs, but there were zero DOs. DOs are widely underrepresented in deciding who gets the grant or not. So the main argument is that it's hard for DOs to get NIH grants. It'll discourage DOs and researchers at the DO schools from pursuing NIH grants, and that'll lead to diminishing uh, research culture in these schools. And since medical schools ranking system consider research productivity, and DO schools will consistently rank lower than MD schools, which will make applicants desire MD schools more over DO schools. And also when students actually go to medical school, MD applicants will be stronger because they'll have a stronger research uh, experience than their DO applicants. DOs definitely contribute to medical knowledge, no question about that. I've been reading about all the wonderful things that DO doctors have been discovering that's helping their patients. And you can too do research when you're a DO doctor. I'm all for encouraging people to do research in regardless of what they do, even if you're not a doctor. For people who want to become doctors, I want to end my video with three things. The first point is that it is easier to get into a DO school than an MD school statistically. Obviously, both type of schools are very difficult to get into and you need to work really hard. I made a video about my path to becoming a doctor, so please take a look. If you want the highest chance of going into any medical school, the best thing to do is apply to every single one of them, both MD and DO. Get into both MDs and DO schools and then make your decision. More options, the better. Don't actually apply to all the schools because it's gonna cost your parents a lot of money. My point number two is that if you want to do research as a part of your career, going to MD school will provide you with much more opportunities right now. It might change in the future and I hope that it does. If you're a DO and you want to change this, incorporate research into your career, work in a DO school, and encourage others to do research as well. Also, apply for those grants and compete against all the other MDs and PhDs and win. And start creating this culture of research in these DO schools. 
There's an editorial piece published in the Journal of American Osteopathic Association by Dr. Grace Brennan, who is a PhD, who talks about the difficulty of conducting research in DO schools. And they talked about the uh, lack of DO culture, having identifying mentors for researchers that's difficult. She states that generating interest in research in DO is an ongoing issue. I'll provide a link to every study that I cited in the descriptions below. The third point is that having an MD degree gives you an easier path to entering a very difficult subspecialty or entering a very competitive program in all specialties. It all depends on what you wanna do as a doctor. You can become excellent doctors either way, but definitely having an MD degree provides a path of less resistance moving forward and gives you more options. All I wanted to do in this video is give you additional details on what the other YouTubers haven't been touching on. I think it is important to just know before you get into whatever you want to get into, just so that you're not surprised later on. Thank you for watching. Now go back to your studying or go back to enjoying your summer break.